we can move on to the, the next slide. So this is a, a graph produced by NASA um, showing the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere oh, it's changed. for the last um, millions of years. As Stefano told you in a, in a previous presentation, um, the Earth was naturally um, very hot in previous times. Um, but the growth of plants has uh, reduced the, took out carbon dioxide and other gases and kept the concentration of CO2 and other gases uh, low in the atmosphere with the result that for millions of years, we've, we've had a very low carbon dioxide uh, concentration. Now, the, the point of this slide is, um, that right on the right hand margin, uh, really beginning in 1750, but that we all know about um, how rapidly uh, things can increase. From 1950, the CO2 level is going absolutely crazy. So it's exactly the same way that um, COVID multiplied. We're, we're in a period, it's, we're not talking now about climate change. What the, the climate specialists are now talking about the great acceleration, because I'm going to show you a series of slides um, so that you'll understand not that this is something that's happened and we're doing something about it. Um, it's something which has happened uh, and its effects are accelerating and our chances of actually doing anything about it are receding each year uh, that we do do something, but it, but that is a, a marvelous slide because uh, uh, this massive sampling of snow and ice sediments drilled out and caused over the millennia is is fantastic. So that that really just shows that the message is the great acceleration, not climate change. Next slide, please. But the, the, the weather effects which are producing climate change at, at the moment, um, obviously, um, it's just simply a greenhouse factor. The more CO2 that goes in the atmosphere, the more heat is caught in the Earth's atmosphere. And year by year, um, more and more sun heat can get here. So, so we have, uh, so the problem slowly goes up um, a, a bit of a curve in a way that can be understood. But it would be very false to um, make an assumption that that is the long term trend. Because um, looking at all the mathematics, there are certain really big events um, which, if they're triggered, will just have. Uh, slam bang worldwide effects. And the one that we're experiencing at the moment is the melting of the Greenland ice sheet. Um, it's on the telly at the moment. You can see all the glaciers collapsing. The ice is melting at three times the rate uh, per year that it ever has before. Uh, and it looks as if within the next few years, the whole of Greenland is going to become ice free. Um, and sea levels will rise by about 250 millimetres, having abs an absolute uh, traumatic effect all over the world. There's an uh, another deal breaker coming along in the West Antarctic ice sheet. Uh, I won't read them all out, but the, the northern permafrost one, I think we've talked about before, um, as as particularly the Russian and Canadian tundra warms up, the, the, uh, there's a mass of methane um, locked into all the peat bogs at the moment. And methane's a worse greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So, um, so if we don't control, um, get hold of the CO2 emission and keep a lid on this, um, so it comes these increases soon, 
Oh, All these other effects um, start hammering in. Now, I'm not going to go yes. on, uh, read, read the, down the whole table, but um, the, 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 the point of the story is that you know, all of us humans, we'd like to be optimistic and we'd, we'd like to think, you know, that, it, you know, it won't really happen. Um, and if it does happen, you know, we'll find a way of getting hold of it. And what I'm trying to get across is that we're in a, um, an extremely dangerous situation at the moment. Um, and the, the dangers are, are, are increasing at a fantastic rate. Next slide, please. Um, I think that um, all of us that are alive today, um, um, you know, we, we we kind of think that um, the world that we're living is is pretty pretty much the same. But um, most of us know this is a series of socio-economic trends, and we all know the world population is. Um, is going through, uh, going through the route and the rate of increase of the world population, this is the point, just the same as with COVID, the rate of increase is increasing. Um, now we've discovered this fantastic malaria uh, vaccine, mm. which will be very important um, in Africa in particular. The rate of increase of world, world population um, could be um, even more. Um, the next graph along on the top of the medal is real GDP. You know, there is a hell of a lot of um, hardware and manufactured goods um, being made, but the rate of this, the, 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 the way that our type of economy, one country after another is industrializing. Um, so that's the, it, the, the problem isn't just that uh, the developed countries are um, just not changing fast enough. The problem is that masses of other countries all over the world um, are also increasing in population and growing in wealth to catch up with us. So um, I'm not going to go through all of these, um, these, these uh, but, but that, uh, but the, the series of indicators, fertilizer consumption, right-hand column, second down. Look at this sudden use of fertilizer. You know, people talk about the industrialized farming and the damage it's done. It's a completely new effect and it's up to the catastrophic. It's only been happening for a short time. So that the message that um, I'm communicating here is um, again, um, we're looking at a great acceleration. We're not looking at historical trend, you know, that we need to do something about some time. We're talking about something that like COVID has just arrived and it's increasing at a rate that nobody who doesn't watch these figures um, understands. Let's look at the next slide. So um, this is the physical measurements on the earth of what's happening caused by this and of course, but the uh, top left graph is the carbon dioxide, and you'll see like COVID, it's beginning to take off, but frighteningly, nitrous oxide is also building up. That's another green, greenhouse gas. Methane is even worse than, um, than carbon dioxide coming out of the peat bogs, as I mentioned, increasing fast. Um, look at the stratospheric ozone. That's another horrific greenhouse gas never significant before, that's increasing. So middle column, second down, the surface temperature is increasing. Um, right hand side, the, the ocean is um, becoming more acid, which has um, profound implications for everything growing in it. And it's growing more acid because it's got more carbon dioxide dissolved in it. The, the uh, left-hand column, third one down, is marine life capture. These industrialized methods of catching fish. If you look at look at um, fish hauled out from the sea for thousands of years, all in man's previous existence, 
and you look at the current industrialized operation to um, denude the oceans of fish, it's absolutely uh, unbelievable. Uh, I didn't know that until I saw this graph. The shrimp agriculture, that's all we all like, like our shrimps, that's making saltwater ponds um, on mud flats is extremely detrimental to the environment and the, con the uh, companies in question. Um, bottom left hand column bottom is trop uh, tropical forest loss. See that really this is uh, this is all stuff that's happening. These are curves from 1950. So you, you can see why I'm talking about the, the great acceleration and then why I'm concerned that um, our leaders and even the wildlife, the environmentalists haven't got across the message. Um, they shouldn't be talking about climate change. They should be talking about the great acceleration. Next slide, please. So this is an absolutely horrific slide. Um, this, this is the um, percentage decline in selected global insect populations over the past decade. Just 10 years, we've lost 68% of the caddis flies in the whole of the world. We've lost 53% of the butterflies. And going down to, to regular flies, we've lost 25%. The bees now that, now the, the, these catastrophic figures, this, this isn't the figure for, for Britain. Um, this is a figure that, that arises um, partly because of um, the change of the environment, um, in, industrialized farming, climate change. Um, but it, it, it also arises from change of land use, the cutting down of all of the forests. But um, you, you, I think you will be with me now, but to, to, to lose that proportion, I mean, we are, this extinction that is happening at the moment is far faster and far greater than ever happened when um, the, uh, the big meteor hit the Yucatan Peninsula and called, and caused the, the end of the uh, Jurassic Age. This is absolutely horrifying. Next slide, please. So now we're going to start talking about uh, what is going on. You've had the bad news. We're now we're going to be talking about a little bit of good news. So I thought I'd put a slide up which shows just for Britain where all this bloody um, energy is going. 44% is going space heating of various kinds. 42% is going in transport and small bits are going in, um, in non-heat. So what's got to happen is the um, basically space heating and transport, the, the energy consumption has got to be reduced or replaced by sustainable forms of energy. Next slide, please. And I thought I'd give you a, a bit more detail that the um, cooking is worth uh, 2%. I know that's a small item. Uh, I haven't shown a table. Cooking by a microwave is about 10% of the energy usage of cooking on a stove. Um, and you see the, the, the big orange at the bottom is uh, space heating. Space heating at home is about 17% and industrial processes are 14%. Transport's 27% and the building industry is about 16%. So it's a lot of work being done on where, where the energy is going. Next slide. So now we're, we're talking about the, um, the good news, the race against time. So um, the interesting thing about that, that picture is that it shows the, 
the, the modern form of wind turbine. Those wind turbines are, are absolutely huge. Um, they're um, basically the size of those rotors now is, the, uh, you know, they're about, about 100 meters. They're absolutely enormous and they're very honest. And they're producing um, now exceptionally low cost electrical power much lower cost electrical power than oil power from hydrocarbons. The, the technology that's gone into producing, uh, developing those windmills, if 20 or 30 years or 40 years ago, we'd woken up to this problem and instead of building all these North Sea oil problems and going after oil exploration, we could have had an industrial age and gone straight to building turbines like this and produce energy which is cheaper than what we previously had. But that's encouraging news because everybody knows that the problem with is that the wind doesn't, doesn't always constantly blow. How do we store electricity? And the next problem is we can't use electricity for major power sources like running heavy transport. So um, there's another revolution that hasn't been sufficiently publicized, um, which, uh, which is coming forward. Uh, I don't think most people realize just how big and how fast this, you know, about 30 or 40 percent of our plants coming out of windmills at the moment. But um, you all did electrolysis at, um, at school. You all know about putting a couple of electrodes, you know, in a, in a, in a, saline bath and and uh and running a current through and and how hydrogen and, and oxygen are are, uh, are produced so now what's happening is that um uh, hydrogen generating uh, fuel cells um for the big offshore applications the, the plan is to actually put them on the rigs off sit off of sea or for for wind, for offshore wind which is close to the shore the the, the wind the windmill electric generated power will go straight to um huge um electrolysis farms which will will create hydrogen so the, so we've had the the wind power revolution which has exceeded all expectations and now we've got another revolution coming forward, which is the generation of, of offshore hydrogen, which is enormously um, exciting. Uh, it needs a massive amount of money. Uh, and when, for example, um, the present prime minister, Liz, Liz Truss, started talking of not taxing the energy companies, I think everybody knows that uh, the maximum cash flows that money from everywhere has got to go in to creating uh, offshore wind with a capable hydrogen capability uh, at a much faster rate than anybody previously believed was imaginable to do it. But, you know, we're in Birmingham. Look at what happened in the Industrial Revolution. Look at all of the other revolutions that have happened. Look at the speed of industrial change now. Um, uh, um, I'm, I, I've been previously totally pessimistic that we'll get through this, um, but um, I, I do see a, a chance with massive industrial investments and in a, in a business climate which, which is absolutely directed where it's all hands on deck, we must get this right. Next slide, please. And this is another um, incredible one. I don't know how many people saw this article, but uh, the, the, the finances in position um, the finances in position to, to lay um, a, 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 a subsea cable all the way to Morocco. Will it go off? Um, where where uh, no, where there's going to connect with an, an absolutely massive solar farm um, just in, in the background, whether you can see it. And of course, Morocco is quite far south now, so it's in the trade wind, so it has steady winds, so it's all, 
an excellent place to have um, offshore power generation. So this proposal is, is going through now. The power is going to come on board in, uh, in, in Corn, Cornwall. I think the finance is in position. And this is going to produce power for 7 million homes. So what we're actually seeing here is um, a, a complete change in the, the geography of the planet because of the cheapness of um, solar power, the really hot regions like the Sahara are going to become the key areas for generating power and where future populations will be able to live. Um, and if they don't live there, then the other alternative source is where there is massive offshore wind. So what we're actually seeing is how the whole of the world's geography is going to have to change at one hell of a rate. Next slide. So one of the slides we haven't uh, looked at yet is the uh, about 17% of, of energy uh, of, of uh, greenhouse gases uh, comes from um, agriculture and farming. So there's a, a massive amount of work being done on um, what animals are really bad and, 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 and how energy can be saved in the food we eat. So on the left-hand side in the, in the turquoise, you can see that to get a kilogram of um, beef, you need 22,000 litres of water and you need an inf infinitesimal amount of water to, if, if you're going to produce a kilogram of insect. Chicken is less bad at 2,300. Pork's a, a lot better than beef at, at uh, 3,500. Lamb's just a bit better. The grams of feed, you look at the massive amounts of feed that has to go to livestock in order to produce one kilogram of meat. Um, you know, we've only uh, really had these, these modern diets for the last, um, for the last two or three hundred years, uh, you know, before about 15 or 1600, most diets were pretty heavily lead vegetable based, you know, the, and the hunter shooter, uh, the hunter collection diets on which we evolved. Um, we didn't have any of the, like this meat consumption. So what can be done? Next slide, please. So we really now need to look at, at the, uh, the traditional food before um, we, we ate um, hunted animals. By far and away, the biggest source of nutrition, and it still is in primitive societies, is insects. And the insects, um, high in protein, full of fiber and healthy fats, low in sugar, good source of vitamins and minerals, less land and water, fewer greenhouse gases and ammonia. So, so basically, um, you know, just forget the hang-ups of the darts we've been familiar with for 200 years, looking at it on a world scale. Um, there's got to be a big change here. Next slide, please. And it's happening because um, whatever we may think about eating insects, I can, I can remember when I f first started, when our family first had a television set, watching people in Palestine in, in the late 40s um, eating f in fried locusts. But if you, if you uh, look at the, the market value of edible insects, um, forget Europe and all its fads and money, but all over the world, um, this, this movement to eating insects is taking place. So basically, um, now let's look at the next slide, please. So, so where, where we've got to in conclusion, what I've introduced you to is, is not the subject of climate change, something much more terrifying, which we now call the Great Acceleration, which is because of the way all parts of the world 
all want to develop and all want to be like us and nothing's going to stop them there's a massive massive changes which is incredibly dangerous and it's even money um, but it's possible that uh, if if all of us get sufficiently alerted that enough political pressure can be put on to focus on the industrial processes which will get, get us out of this problem and change the way we live what we eat and 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 how we look after ourselves um, so as part, part of the fact that we we actually need to do something obviously there's a the old rotary four-way test is what drives drives me we have a duty to communicate this to the best of our ability we are communicating it to schools like hallfield um but um uh, the the um the Martin Trust has presented the club with um, with a thermal camera, which has been handed over to uh, Stefano. Except I've spent spent it spelt his name wrong, um, and Stefano's going to introduce what we're going to be doing with this thermal camera because now everybody's desperate about um, heat loss from their own homes. We, as as a club, we can still communicate and we can work with people and we can make money by um, developing a capability to use a, th a thermal camera on our own homes and on others' homes and actually get hands on and become part of the movement to do something about this. So over to, over to you, Stefano. Next slide. Mm -hmm. mm, saying uh, a couple of things that uh, we don't need uh, the pictures because uh, such as uh, big investments, so big in investors uh, are, uh, mm, are aiming, are tackling uh, very big uh, infrastructures, very big uh, projects that are able to save uh, mm, significant amount of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And so try to stop what Martin was saying from, uh, um from uh, exploiting even more uh, uh, for continuing even more than what is uh, uh, the trend nowadays um, we have at the same time need to tackle also at a local level because of course uh, uh, great investments are for great projects but at the same time without uh, Mm, without uh, addressing also our own house, uh, our own office, uh, or uh, our uh, lifestyle, we are not able to be uh, so to have uh, such a big impact on uh, on the on a global uh, level. So, um, what uh, what are we talking about uh, here? We have, uh, as you can see. Uh, that camera I will show you is here. This is uh, this is uh, the the camera, and uh, is able, as you can see from the pictures, that kindly David uh, is uh, sharing uh, uh, with us. You are able to see if uh, the um, if your uh, building, if your villa, if uh, according to where you live, uh, is. Uh, efficient uh, from a thermal point of view or if there are uh, losses um, actually those thermal camera uh, they are working uh, uh, with uh, infrared radiation so they are able to see uh, things that our eye is not able to um, and um, and in order to to do so um, they uh, experts, uh, uh, infrared experts are needed, much needed because uh, mm, is a, is a very complex. Uh, is very comp It looks like that is easy, but uh, is not. It's very such a complex uh, matter subject. And but uh, thanks to that, uh, to this uh, thermal imaging camera, we are, uh, for example, able to check uh, for uh, moistures, uh, even. Uh, 
behind the, the wall, uh, water damage, uh, or also insulation deficiency, such as um, thermal loss, bridge, uh, or, um, or things that you are not able to see with, uh, your, uh, with your eyes, and also drafts. Uh, so accord all, uh, all those, especially the insulation deficiency and the draft, are usually making you spend a lot, a lot, a lot more money while eating um, during winter. Uh, it works also during cooling in summer, but uh, mm, UK summers are not as hot as in Italy, so for sure uh, the the eating uh, uh, the eating um, months uh, winter winter are uh, are much uh, more interesting from uh, uh, for you. So regarding this, uh, uh, thanks to uh, some uh, snapshots from this camera, we are able to understand if uh, and how. Um, we can address uh, uh, eventually a uh, insulation deficiency and or uh, drafts uh, issues. And uh, this is uh, now I give the, the word back to, to Martin um, according some other details, but uh, uh, this is a very powerful uh, tool that uh, is uh, worth uh, to uh, to be used uh, for uh, in order to decrease as much as possible both uh, our impact on uh, on the world and also save a bit of money that uh, that is always uh, a good thing. Thank you, Martin. Is a uh, word to you. Okay. Well, thanks, Stefano. So. So the, the first thing that we've got to do with this camera is, is to, uh, it's effectively just another smartphone. So the, uh, there's a, a, a period of practice required to learn how to use it properly. Um, and there's all, all the, the standard at IT stuff of how you transfer images and all the rest of it. Um, so what we would like to do, to Stefano and myself, is to um, uh, create a capability um, in us to uh, e easily use this thermal camera um, and to teach others how to use it. Um, and we, we really see uh, two opportunities. Um, uh, uh, we, we see it's an opportunity for teaching people and focusing them on um, these uh, great acceleration issues, but also helping people uh, understand heat loss from their own homes and uh, what they can do about it. So um, in terms of personal service, there's, there's an opportunity here to, to help people. Um, being more commercial about it. Um, the club having got this kit, um, there must be a way that we can actually uh, uh, use it and hire it out even to other Rotarians for a small contribution of the energy they will save in using it. Um, but these are early days yet. The, 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 main, the main thing is um, that uh, uh, you know, we, we've all got to uh, get hands on it. One other thing which I didn't mention, I meant to mention earlier, we all know what's what's ha happening in electric cars, but um, there will be no gas heating installed in new homes, I think after 2025. Gas central heating has just got to um, be taken out of, um, of all domestic premises. Um, until it can be replaced by by hydrogen as soon as possible. Okay, Stefano, I think that's a, that's a, we've we've got a very a very tolerant audience who have put us up put up with us so far. So I will end at that point. Thank you very much, Tom Martin, Stefano. I'm going to stop the recording.